Drew, you killed this shit. Drew, you killed this shit. You know what it is. You are tuned in to another episode of In the Four Corners of Wrestling, throwing them foes up. We throwing them quads down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm back. Your boy Walker Mar in the building. And of course, I got my fellas with me. Quimbo. What's happening with you, Wally? Man, I just having another good week. It's yes, hot out here, but you know what? Even though it's hot, we still gonna watch this wrestling. You feel me? I feel you. I feel you, man. Of course, we got Mr. Royalty himself, the one and only King Mel in the bed. And what's happening with you, player? What's happening, Wild Card? What's happening? Feeling good, feeling great, feeling great, feeling good. Always a pleasure to see you, my brother. And of course, hey, don't adjust that TV screen. No, this is not the Elbow Drop Podcast. This is in the Four Corners of Wrestling. And that's Trillion Dollar Tread. What's happening with you, Wardy? Yo, good to be back, man. Always, always. Don't you mention that bullshit on here? <laughs> hey, did y'all see how Trevor Face got like, oh shit, when I when this just his recording in progress, that motherfucker said, oh shit, how they do it over here? <laughs> hey, I just had to make sure people didn't adjust the TV screens on your YouTube channel. This is the Four Corners of Wrestling, the wrestling podcast. Made from wrestling fans for wrestling fans, and we're gonna get straight into it because man, there's been a lot going on for months over in WWE. We've been seeing the QR codes, the flicker, the TV, and the and all the static and the and all this just you know coded messages, and then all of a sudden on Monday Night Raw before it went off, the Wyatt Six came popping up. How y'all like the debut? I'm going to come to you, Trev, man, because uh, I know you've been a big Bray Wyatt fan, so talk to us, man. How, how'd you enjoy uh, uh, the debut of, the, of the, the new faction, man? You don't got to lie. It's because you want to ask the white guy about the horror thing first. <laughs> <laughs> you caught me, but I want to I got to follow up with it and say it was awesome. <laughs> it was great. I can't hate on it. I don't think anybody can. Nah, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Think you paid off all the kind of cryptic messages for for months and everything? Man, I was just saying last week when they put up their last QR code before I checked it, I was like, they're dragging the stuff on too long. Mm. They're doing the same thing they did last time. They need to just get to it. And they heard me and they were like, okay, <laughs> well, we'll get to it. <laughs> and then they show up and kill everybody. <laughs> yeah, turn it into a, a horse scene for real. King Mel, jump in here, man. What you think of the debut, man? Yeah, uh, as Trey pointed to, they killed everybody. RP to Chad Gable. All right, it'll be a miracle if we see him on Raw next week. But yeah, he's supposed to have a match, but I don't think he's gonna make it. Um, <laughs> but it was definitely dope. Just had a bit of a little bit of piece of Bray throughout the years, or at least something close to him, which I found interesting. Yeah, I like the fact that Uncle Howdy. Went from a white, yellowish beard to black. I was like, okay. He done got younger. That's kind of cool. Okay, okay. Details matter. Hey, hey, I'm gonna, you know, hey, hey, just for those that know the show, you know, King Mel is our detail guy. He, 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 he likes to pick out the little nuggets that always matter. Always matter. They always matter. Quavo, man, jump in here, man. What you think about the debut of the White Six? First of all, I can't believe you went to Moda. And Stoney from Set It Off before going to me on this topic. Fucked up. Cold. But I'm excited. They, they're, they're here, guys. They're here. And I think it's been a while. We, we, you know, with this this buildup is actually pretty good. You yeah. know, I think the timing for it is perfect, too. We just came off the heels of this PLE, which it was a little lackluster, in my opinion. Um, but Having surprise, having a lot of surprises on the raw after PLE, just kind of staples that into your memory, and it kind of, and I like how they've taken their time to really adjust how you see this raw, especially when you go to the playback from beginning to end. 
you could show you could see that they're putting that little stamp or that marker that the Wyatt family is influencing that show. So I thought it was pretty good, man. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was so dope that uh you know uh, it, it, I think we needed to go ahead and talk about that first. Uh, uh just because I mean we've been waiting for this payoff and and been waiting for uh you know uh, uh at, at least ever since they start dropping the QR codes and and the flicker and, and the little cryptic messages we've been like what is it is it finally happening what's going on so it finally dropped uh, uh you know the cinematic piece of it you know uh it, it just just the slow movement of the camera and then just you saw all the nuggets like Mel said uh yeah. get your boy. it made you want to scream out and say you guys kill Chad you bastards <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I killed him y'all hey <laughs> you killed Chad so it's like yeah man um I think what I love about it uh, uh the most and uh, we kind of talked about it uh, off air uh, is that it, it? It's so many nuggets that was in that uh, little short period of time that they had. Um, it it makes you, <laughs> it makes you want to um, uh, just can't wait to see where this goes. And hopefully, if they don't, that uh, creative doesn't fumble the ball on this. That's that's the only thing I hope for. Uh, don't don't fumble the ball on this because I think they did a great job. Um, uh, hey, I I really want to know like, yeah. what's going to happen next week. Mm-hmm. Cause like how how do any of these wrestlers see that happen? See these guys show up and like destroy the entire set and kill half of the roster? How do you show up next week and give a shit about anything else? I think that's why Drew quit. Like, that's why he quit. <laughs> Drew was like, "Man, I know what's coming up. I quit. I'm gonna quit like, now." <laughs> so someone's gonna come out and be like, "Hey, I'm gonna come out. I gotta win the money in the bank now." Like, there's a guy backstage who's gonna bash your head in with a hammer. <laughs> what do you, nobody cares about that ladder so i really want to know like what raw is going to look like now hey man hey it, not only that it's, it's um dare i say i i know it's early i'm not trying to say it is this but it does give you that same fear factor like when you saw undertaker when you saw things like mankind or or things like that where it gives you that fear factor and and helps with the storytelling so good point on that trev so Hopefully that that transcends into a more, I guess, fearful atmosphere on Raw. Uh, it makes people more cautious. So, hey, I, hey, I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, definitely for sure. Um, but didn't mean to jump the gun over Clash at the Castle, but had to talk about that because that was something that was, you know, just mind blowing for sure, and uh, probably one of the most important things uh, or the hot, hottest topic in the, uh, uh, you know, uh, wrestling world. But let's talk about a clash at the castle. Quavo, man, you said it was kind of like Luster, man. Kind of elaborate on it, man. What, what what did you not like about clash at the castle, man? Talk, talk to us, man. I mean, Cody, for example, you know I don't like anything <laughs> Cody related. He shouldn't have been just... But he's got to show up. He's got to show up. But you got you to gotta also admit, out of the entire pay-per-view... He wasn't the best match. He wasn't the best match. I got I gotta give him that. Like um Sammy and Chad, I think they really did steal the show. Um, I think that was probably one of my favorite matches out of everything. Agreed. Um, but also the Damian Priest match with Drew was really good. Like I was actually very entertained. So I'm I'm I I will say it had it not been for those matches being in there. This this would have been a really dry pay per view, you know, kind of like something Monday Night Raw would book on my GM mode, you know. Sir, you sir, you're familiar with that, right? Sir, like, like, like you, you didn't have to throw that in there. Like, see, I was, I was, I was just fine, man. Like, like, why, why you messing with me, Quavo, man? Why you, why you messing with me? Hey, keep messing around. I'm gonna snatch one of the te- taquitos off the back of your neck and dip it in some sour cream. Stop messing with me. Uh. <laughs> Trev, man, talk about Clash of the Castle, man. How'd you enjoy it, man? I mean, I I think I agree with Quavo. If you take every good match off the card, it wasn't a good show. But <laughs> I think uh, I think the Cody match wasn't that bad. You know, uh, a lot of people have complained about it. They've complained about the ending a lot. Uh, I didn't think there was really that much wrong with it. I do think for him being the WWE champion, Maybe he should be having the best match regularly. 
and I agree it wasn't the best match on the card, but I thought it was a good opener. I thought, uh, like he said, the, the IC title and the World Heavyweight were good. Uh, I thought the women's tag match was good because of the surprise ending and nothing else about it. But I don't know. It was it was a, it was a good pay per view, but based on the last few that we've seen before this, I don't think it was their best one. Fell down a little bit from Mania and Backlash. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and I definitely hear what you guys are saying. Uh, uh, because. I did hear some of the same complaints, obviously, since we're wrestling fans, we're part of, you know, multiple wrestling, uh, uh, you know, groups and on the internet, and, and we hear it all the time. Uh, I, I heard some people complaining about the placement of that Cody match, and I'm like, it made sense. It made sense um, to have him start off the show uh, with a, a I Quit match, kind of set the tone, um, because obviously they're in Scotland. There's, there's, we know who the main event is. Like that, that was a given. So, um, you know, I, I thought it was fine. Sometimes a, a opening match is, is just as important as it is the final match. Uh, you know, it, it, if, if you come out with a banger and, and kind of set the tone, it, yeah, you know, it, I thought it was just fine. But, Mel, jump in here, man. What uh, would you uh, like or dislike of Clash at the Castle, man? Talk to us. I thought the event was pretty solid to me. The only thing I hated was the fact that Elba and Dawn became the women's tag team champions. Mm. I hated that. Talk to us, man, because there's a, I'm, there's I'm a lot of people saying. that's kind of on, on both sides of the fence on that one. Man, yeah, every time I hear something, oh, WWE got to be consistent with the women. So you got Jade and Bianca who doing their thing. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, two women just now come back, come to their home country, and now they win champions. <laughs> Now they now they win champions. That that's what we doing. Last week it was consistency. This week, yeah, let's just throw the champions on the hometown people. Mm. I don't know that that kind of got me upset. But everything else, as far as Cody and AJ, I enjoyed that match. I was able to get some blood out of that match. Mm. Not a lot of people, you know, people have been complaining about the ending, but I was like, oh, I got some blood. I saw some handcuffs. I thought they was trying to be creative out there. We know what Chad Gable and Sammy was going to do. Yeah. I didn't really care too much for the Bailey match. Oh, yeah. It wasn't enough story for that to me. <laughs> like, it just wasn't that good enough for me. I, I wasn't really. It was like, okay. Glad we had the match. All right, next. I actually thought Piper never did pretty well in that match. Yeah. Glad we had the match. Next. <laughs> um... <laughs> And then the main event, we got with CM Punk with the good old tribute to AJ Styles, hit him with the two. <laughs> and I mean, not AJ Styles, AJ Lee, but yeah, it was pretty damn good. Hey, man, <laughs> you ain't had to do it. You ain't had to do my boo-boo Bailey like that, man. I thought the match was solid, man. <laughs> it was solid, man. It was solid. But I mean, you know, um, I hey. I understand everybody's, you know, uh, opinions on on Clash of the Castle. Uh, it is what it is. I uh, uh, I know a lot of the fans uh, in in Glasgow weren't happy at the end, and uh, as the, uh, Samantha Irvin uh, was getting booed pretty heavily uh, at the end, and Drew was still pretty upset. Uh -huh. um, but let's talk about that ending, man. I, I somebody had to see that coming. I I I didn't see it coming um, because I just thought it made sense to. Let Drew finally get one in the in the home country, but I thought that was genius. I thought it was uh, genius. I thought it was genius. We got the hater of the year in CM Punk, bro. <laughs> I, I felt like he was gonna show up. I knew he was showing and up. do that, but I didn't. I didn't think it was. I think that was a creative way to have him come out instead of just coming out and just like hitting him or something. Have him come out as the ref and completely screw him over. I right. agree with you, Trev. I agree with you. Have y'all have y'all seen that video of him getting the ref shirt? That's yeah. exactly what I was about the, to the backstage. To. Like, yeah, that, that girl that needs to get shirt. fired. My <laughs> man looked at that woman and said, "Nah, we can't let this go down like this. We can't yeah, let this shirt win like this. Give me the shirt. Give me the shirt." Magically, she she had an extra shirt. Yeah, but she, she said, here you go. Yeah, but she she just gives it to him, and then after. He walks away. Well, what do you need it for? 
it's Halloween. Have fun. You're like, come yeah. on. <laughs> nah, it was, it was creative. It was definitely creative. I knew CM Punk was going to screw that man out of the time. Yeah, I saw it last week. I had my shirt on. CM Punk was pointing to the grave of Drew McIntyre. So, yeah, you kind of, you kind of saw. Something I had, it, I had my suspicion. Now for that, CM Punk as acting as the ref, giving the two count. Yeah, and it hit him with the two in his face. Oh, I would have quit Raw too. <laughs> I would have quit Raw too, because now he just disrespect in front of my home crowd. They thought they was about to have one. Last year was Solo, and this year is CM Punk. Mm. Mm. Next year is going to be Tazawa. Let me stop. <laughs> now you didn't go on too far, sir. Now you didn't go on too far. <laughs> hey, miss, sometimes you got to know when to hold them, and you got to know when to fold them, and you got to know when to walk away. <laughs> All right. That's what Drew did. Yeah. Well, yeah, speaking of Drew, you know, uh, he was a little upset about it and, and, and dropped the uh, the two infamous words he said I quit uh, so AJ Styles was the only person to uh, utter those words uh, in the last uh, uh, few hours uh, uh, that week I don't know man this, does this you think this changes the landscape pretty heavily on Raw with no Drew McIntyre go ahead King Mel um what I believe that's about to happen is yeah, um, Drew McIntyre is about to pull up on Friday night in Chicago mm. and beat the brakes off of CM Punk. Mm. He might get hit with a Claymore or get hit with, what What was his his sword name again? Al, Albertha, Agatha, one of them things. He's going to bring the sword back. <laughs> See, he's going to bring the sword back, try to chop his head off or something. <laughs> He gonna be real mad about that. Go ahead, Quavo, man. Hey, hey, what do you think? Uh, how this changes the landscape of Raw with no Drew McIntyre, man? I mean, I, I I don't know. I don't know if it changes it by that much because I feel like they've already been working to get his rivalries closed out. You know, you are you done with this feud with Priest? You know, it's it's over. You you're not about to go for that title again. Um, but. You're right. I think he might just pull out that sword, Mel. He gonna pull out that sword. <laughs> he gonna go out there. He gonna slice some ropes in half and be like, "Give me punk." <laughs> well, I mean, he got nothing else to lose. He he said he quit. So he and but who's gonna stop a a six six dude with a big old sword? Who's gonna stop that? <laughs> like, uh, Braun? He's a big Braun. sob. Yeah, but Braun ain't that stupid, dog. He ain't, no, he's not. Uh, not. Not with a big old sword getting swung, so he ain't that stupid. Triple H had to throw him the sledgehammer like, here. <laughs> <laughs> Your turn. Trav, jump on in here, man. How you think this changed the landscape on Raw? No, no McIntyre. Uh, normally, I'd say it would change it fairly significantly because he's like a main event player. But number one, is a thing that I'm sure we're going to get to soon that also shook up the landscape of raw that I think is going to make up for it. And number two, there's no way Drew's going anywhere without getting his hands on punk in some way. So unless they both go to SmackDown, I don't think he's going to be gone for very long. True. True. Nice segue. As you said, as a, a yeah, we are definitely going to speak on it on some of the things that uh, kind of helps changes the landscape. Uh, especially on Raw, uh, you know, uh, the visionary himself, Seth freaking Rollins returned, uh, and he's back in championship uh, contention, just like that, just like that. So uh, it's been uh, been stamped. It's going to happen uh, at you know Money in the Bank in a couple of more weeks. It's going down. Seth freaking Rollins versus Damian Priest, World Heavyweight Championship. Let's talk about it. Go ahead, Trev. Well, I mean, like you said, segueing off of that, I think this is going to change the landscape way more than uh, Drew doing whatever he does because way back when uh, – at well, not, I guess not way back. When Gunther won King of the Ring, a lot of people saw uh, Gunther heading into – because he's got the title match at SummerSlam for the Raw title, the World Heavyweight. Uh, people saw that as being – him and uh priest maybe him and drew one way or the other now that Seth's here all of that could completely get shaken up mm. I, I could see him beating priest and going on to face gunther even more 
So mm. him him being there, I think, completely changes the entire trajectory of that title, which is the main thing on Raw, or was until the last ten minutes. Hey, hey, yeah, no, I, I love it. I love it, man. Great take right there. Um, I guess I didn't really think about it that much on how, um, you know, you might possibly be with or without one main event player but you have one that for sure is back so i mean it's it's you know you either gain a whole bunch or you you might just lose a little depending on what what's happening with drew quavo jump on in here man i think it's it's a it's a good balance um it's it's something that we do need to have as well because i think a lot of our current raw roster um it's hard to tell who's really in main event contention just because we have a lot of these qualifying matches leading up into money in the bank, you know, and everybody wants to be the guy that has that briefcase to go up against priest. But I think now we're really going to be able to see who deserves to be in that higher bracket. You know, who's, who's just above that mid card level where we could see them being main main event contenders, main event competitors that are going to put on some really good quality matches. Um, so having said there, it's like, okay, good. We need to have that star quality there um, where it doesn't hurt to lose Drew because Seth's there, you know? So I think, I think we're in good, good condition as far as talent wise on Raw. I feel you. I feel you. King Mel, go ahead. Drop your two cents, break. Yeah, I think um, Seth coming back is a great thing for Damian Priest. The reason being is if Priest beats Seth, let's just say at Money in the Bank, he looks a little bit better as the champion. Mm. He looks a little bit better as the champion. Just think about the level of people that he's defeated. He just defeated Drew McIntyre, who he also cashed in on at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Now to beat the guy who just held the belt for over 200-something days as well, and then to carry that into SummerSlam, Mm. That'll look pretty cool for like Priest. That'll Don't give for- him a little bit more credibility. Don't forget, he's the inaugural champ too. That's what I'm saying, yo. Mm. Inaugural, he held that thing for a long mother. Man time. made that belt. Like you the man wonder, who made the belt. It might have been over 300 days or so, or close to somewhere around there. Because I want to say he won the title at the next PLE after WrestleMania last year in WrestleMania 39. So. Yeah, beating Seth Rollins would be great for Priest. Hey, great, great point, great point. Um, you know, it is as as we talk about all the time, especially off air. Uh, it, you know, some wrestling fans put, you know, uh, you know, obviously, you know, some of these reigns that's only happened since April. <laughs> you know, they're ready to either continue them or 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 you know move on already. So, um, you know, for for him to uh, you know go from mania winning it and defending it a few times and, and beating drew and, and, and definitely if he defeats uh, Seth, I think that definitely be like, all right. Yeah. He's our world heavyweight champion. It is it, him is, is, is Damian priest. And I don't know if y'all saw the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, when they do the uh, press conferences, he stole. He stole. He stole a little, uh, little, uh, a little Roman Reigns trick. And, yeah. And, and, but I love it. He said. He said, "I'm not answering a question to you all rise." And I was like, "Okay, you're out of shit." Like, oh, <laughs> I was like, "Okay, okay, David Priest, talk your shit, man." I was, I was digging that. You know, as a fan, he, like, I love it when you can take and exude your character a little bit beyond the ring a little bit and kind of put it on, you know, whether it's social media or in the press conference or whatever, you know, stuff like that adds to your character building. I thought that was pretty dope of Damien. I was like, you've been, you've been, you've been, you've been paying attention. I see you, Damien Priest. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you, but uh, I know. Well, Seth Rollins was the only person that returned to the world of wrestling. Now, this man didn't have a million of returns. Jeff already came back. <laughs> Do it, Fabo. Quavo, you- yo, Quavo <laughs> looked like what Jeff Hardy would be if he didn't do all of Swanton. <laughs> hey. 
Ay, yo. I can't. I can't. Hey, but Jeff Hardy returns. King Mel, talk about it, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um. So Jeff Hardy returned. He's with his brother, TNA. They're going against the system, it looks like, with their moves. And a couple other people. Edward, you know, that former guy, Kurt Hawkins, that used to be. So it's just like, it's Jeff Hardy. I'm not that impressed. <laughs> I know what he's going to do. He gonna jump. He gonna get high and do a swan top bomb. I know what is coming. I just don't know when. <laughs> he gonna get high two ways. <laughs> hey, but it's only good for his health if he uh, does gets the high that he can do the swan top bomb, not the other high. So. <laughs> what he doing in it? Look, man. Let's be honest, man. He gonna do them swan top bombs in them little gymnasium roofs. <laughs> ain't gonna be too far from the ring. He's going to have enough room to kick his leg out and be all right. <laughs> then after that, he's going to see he gonna see his brother, Matt. Matt going to go delete, 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 and they're going to be all right, man. All right. Hey, man. Do I have to be the bad guy again? Do I have to be the bad guy again? I said it about Jericho. I'm about, I'm about tired of Jericho. I can't, can't, I can't have No, you. the whole world is about tired of Jeff Hardy, but hey. But I'm saying, like, do I need to be? I'll say it. Why you gotta be the bad guy? The whole world been saying, "Hey, Jeff, sit your ass down." You know what he does? He he. Let well, me go ahead and do this swan time <laughs> bomb again. It gets get high, does a swan time bomb. <laughs> okay, so so it's not just me. Okay, so it's not just me. I, hey, that makes me feel good. I'm just saying, man. Hey, Jeff Hardy, man. You know, you and Matt, we we love y'all. Y'all are part of our childhood. Man, yes. Easily one of the greatest tag teams in all of uh uh you know wrestling history. We get it. But come on, man. We we I think you better let it go. Boom 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 boom. <laughs> do -do -do -do. Wrestling don't love you no more. Boom 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 do. I mean, come on, I'm just saying, man. Like Hey, all right, we'll move on. Hey, Quavo, you want to say anything about it? About it? Why are you hating on him, bro? What you Why mean? You hating on him, okay? As long as they're willing to do swan time bombs for the fun of it, we we should watch just to make sure you know he lands. You don't even sound confident in that. No, so, yes. so <laughs> I'm not paying for that subscription. <laughs> it, no. So I just want to let y'all uh, know at the end of this episode, uh, Quavo did get his face painted to match Jeff Hardy. <laughs> All right, brother Nero or brother Hitter or whatever Quavo call himself after this. That's what he became. Just want to let y'all know. No, I'm Greg with three G's. Hey, yo. Brother, brother Greg with three G's. Hey, yo, chill. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, I'm not hating Quavo. All I'm saying is, is we've seen this numerous times in wrestling. Us as fans have seen this numerous times. Where there's a wrestler who just won't let it go, and they legacy. I'm not saying their legacy takes a hit, but it it it's like oh, um, like come on, man, you like, like bro, you really gonna kill yourself? Like, stop, like come on, bro, like sit down. You got family, you got you got. You, I'm pretty sure you'd have made a good little chump of change over the, over the last you know few years. Well, well, what if he has it, Lamar? What if he has it? He's still got to show up, lace them boots. So let my man lace them boots, okay? You watch him jump off of something and enjoy it. Hey, Amen. Uh, at this I'm, point, I'm... we're not paying him to wrestle, all right? We just paying him to jump off of stuff. <laughs> That's all we paying him at this point. We're not here to see him wrestle. We don't want to see no twist of fate that he want to try to do, <laughs> no whisper in the wind. Just do the swan time bomb, get up out of here. That's it. Yeah, but come just on. get it over with. All I'm saying That's is, what I came to see. Hey, look, there's an old saying, it's better to get out when you can, or whatever it is that you're doing will make you get out. Like, it, there's going to be a point in time where the, where the game of wrestling is going to put Jeff out. Man, we've been saying that for 10 years, and he's still going. At this point, just let him be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He may I'm be. Here. We hey. still waiting for, for Brian Daniels' farewell tour. He's still wrestling. Yeah, He's that, still wrestling. Come on now. 
Hey, well, well, he kind of said like, <laughs> it's funny you say that because I swear a few weeks ago he said in one of his promos, "I know I'm supposed to be retiring, but I'm just gonna keep going till like." <laughs> I'm like, oh what? Anyway, he can uh, also still hit his moves though, so that is true. He, he, it's he, fine. He's just gonna get hurt after the match is done, but he can yeah. <laughs> he can still do his moves there. So I mean, it's I don't know, man. It's it's just weird. But uh, uh, speaking of matches, it's that time of the show, man, where we uh we talk about everybody's favorite match of the week. King Mel, talk to me, man. Give me a match that you was like, yo, fire. You know what? I'm gonna stick with my boy Braun Breaker. Mm. I was. Intrigued once again by this dude. This what type of athlete, you know, genetic freak, whatever. Genetic nephew of a freak. That's what I'm gonna call him from now on. Genetic nephew of a freak. He's very interesting right now. And I like the direction that he's going in. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Uh yeah, what match was that? Uh it was him and um Seamus this week. Yeah, him and Shaman put on banger after banger after banger. Quavo, give me a match of the week, man. Uh, I'm going to go with the women's triple triple threat tag team match. Yeah, the one with Roxanne, Lola Vice, you know, JC Jane. The, those ladies, they put on a pretty good match. I like the pace of it. And um, it was actually pretty entertaining. And I I like the story that they're building with Vice and Roxy P right now. So having them kind of work together, but also showing Roxanne's, you know, I don't trust anybody vibe with, with the way that she wrestled. I thought it was really good. Pretty good story in that match. Okay. Little, little layers to the NXT Women's Champ. Okay. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. Between all and Trev, talk to us, man. What match stood out to you, man? Uh, I mean, I still got to go with the uh, Gable and Sammy IC match from Clash of the Castle. Not mad at it. I, I think it, I think it was a clinic. Honestly, like, there's a lot of other stuff going on in wrestling right now with like Punk and Drew. Now we got the Wyatt Six, all of that. Between Alpha Academy and Sammy, like the IC title picture might be the best one overall right now. Mm. Like they're they are like low key cooking with everything they do, and the the Braun Breaker and Sheamus to go off of that too coming out, their stuff getting in the picture. Like they got something going on there too. Hey, uh, all I know is there's probably if I was a wrestler, if I ever wrestled, there'd be three things I would hate to get. I would hate to get uh, a power driver from Owen Hart. Uh, I would hate to get a chop from from Gunter. And I would hate to get a spear from Braun Breaker. The way that he, <laughs> you know, the way that Kaiser folded after that spear, bro. Nah, I'm good. Hey, man, take this out the match. I, I <laughs> matter of fact, you could, you could, I'll pay you to take this out the match. Like, just, just, nah, I'm good on that, man. I ain't taking that chop, and damn sure ain't taking that power driver. I'm good. <laughs> so, nah, it's hey. Great choices, great choices, man. Uh, uh, definitely uh, some uh, uh, great choices for match of the week. I'm not shocked that nobody uh, picked a Mercedes Monet match. I'm not shocked at all. Um, mm, he ain't here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I, you could change your name, but I mean, it's just. Bah, 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 bah. Damn. I mean, I'm just being real, man. Mercedes Renee, like, yeah, I didn't. Your finisher looks pretty boring. And I just, Chicken noodle soup. It, oh my god! It, it, and the, I, I can't. Yeah. Damn. Can you do it? Yeah, can bro. you do it one more time? <laughs> That's really how she be holding it up. I, I, do it better, bro. Like, like my goodness. I, I'm sorry, y'all. I don't, I don't mean to be a Scrooge tonight. I, I'm just not a. Yeah, Tony. That's a lot of money invested, bro. Oof, oof, oof. Mm. Mm. Grass ain't always greener. <laughs> anyway, 
<laughs> oh, 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 trust me. That's that's why she keep doing this. She's <laughs> that's the I just got paid. Yeah, that's a that's a smutty dance, dog. <laughs> that's a smutty dance, dog. <laughs> anyway, man. <laughs> Uh, uh, obviously, uh, Trev, you weren't here for it last week, but I had ended the show and I proposed a question to the fellas. Obviously, with uh, AEW, uh, end of the June, June 30th, they have uh, Forbidden Door coming up. And I proposed a question at some point in time, uh, wouldn't you like to see uh, WWE be more open to working with more companies? Obviously, right now, they got the, you know, little partnership with TNA. And uh, so I just proposed a question. Would you like to see uh, WWE be more prone to working with more companies outside and hopefully, maybe, partnership with AEW down the line? Just, you know, Quavo, give me your thoughts, man. What, what what's, what's your thoughts on the forbidden door getting opened up with WWE and other companies? Um, Don't we have Cody already? Like, are, are you, why do y'all want, AEW to come over. Are, are, are we not? Do, we already have Ethan Page. We already have Cody. We already have Sean Spears. That's I mean, we have Lexus King. <laughs> is is the Forbidden Door really there? Come on now. No, bro. They were free. They needed somewhere to work. I'm talking about just partnership and just putting on good content. You know, I don't think I don't think we need that. Honestly, I don't think we need that. I think WWE's been cooking without AEW mm. this whole time. Um, I think the fact that, you know, we we want that to happen is more of a fan thing, you know, wanting those kind of weird fantasy matches, you know, the kind of stuff that you book on my GM. You know, it's just like, okay, yeah, it'll get you a, uh, you know, maybe a classic, maybe a great match. Um, but honestly, it's like we already need to build up the roster that you have now. So why bother going out of the company when you really need to take time and invest in your roster you have now, making sure that they have the longevity, um, they have the popularity, making sure that they have the skills that they need to actually carry this company. You know, and I think that's one thing that it's like perfect example, Jade. Like, she still sucks. I she knew still you, sucks. I knew you won't come. And now she don't have gold, so now she don't even have gold, and she sucks. How did I know you gonna come for me on that? So it's like, but but I'm just saying, bro. We we don't need more AEW people. What we need is to build up your current roster, build build up some good storylines, build up some good rivalries, and take advantage of the stuff that's gonna happen naturally, and build it up, and you know, just put a spotlight on it. That's why you're gonna bother having another promotion's talent in there stealing the spotlight that you really deserve of you know of your current roster doesn't doesn't make sense it's like shooting yourself in the foot you're going to build up your competition why why even bother i feel you i feel you sure well, so they so they can finally pay a little more to charge trevor's mode out chair no they're not going to do that okay i'm not going to do that. hey man hey i i I feel your point, but hey, man, you ain't had to come for me with that Jay comment, man. I knew you was going to, at some point, drop it in the show in the episode. Man, look, it was so, no, it was, no, look, I, it no. was so obvious. You should have known by the fact that I didn't mention her match. Okay. No, you, you've been waiting on this. You've been waiting to find a way to sneak it in here. Because matter of fact, I knew the moment you saw Clash at the castle and you saw her uh, do that botch off the top rope and she slipped. And you was like, oh, I can't wait to get Lamar for this. I can't wait to get Lamar for it. Hey, all right. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. I actually kind of dozed off after the entrance. <laughs> um, her entrance is long, y'all. And I'm just glad Bianca comes out. Because it's like, thank goodness, y'all. Thank goodness. <laughs> so on last week's episode, I gave Jay, I, I finally gave her some flowers. I was like, yo, she's improving in the ring. Because I thought she was. And then Clash at the Castle happened. I'm like, damn, what a way to make me look crazy as hell on the damn show. <laughs> King Mel, jump on in here, man. Uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts on, uh, uh, you know, forbidden doors getting opened up uh, in, in WWE and possible 
uh, partnerships with, with other companies like AEW? Well, right now, I don't know anything about they're going to do anything with AEW. Right now, I don't really care for that at this point. What I see them doing is working with people in Japan. As of right now, AJ Styles is going against a Noah wrestler named Namochi Marafuji. If that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, I don't know. That's probably not how you pronounce it. We didn't ask you, Jeff Hardy. (laughs) But, um, yeah, so this is kind of dope. AJ going back to Japan. He got some roots out there. Mm This will be their first ever one-on-one match. And also, EO Sky has the same match at the event as well. Mm. So, this is like, the door is opening. We're seeing our wrestlers travel, WWE wrestlers travel to all the promotions at this point. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing is, are they going to bring their fans over here to WWE as well? Or what's going to happen? That's the next question. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's a, a, a lot that still needs to get answered with, with these partnerships, obviously, with the... Uh, with the TNA, uh, you know, partnership, as in we've seen uh, uh, with the Battle Royal uh, on NXT, there's been some people that uh, came over, you know. Uh, so uh, uh, it's uh, who, who who y'all believe in? I believe Joe Hendry. Okay, I just wanted to check. I believe <laughs> Joe Hendry. So you know, it, don't, that's that's a that's a that's a pro to when you see these forbidden doors getting open. Where some things that are over in other companies and get introduced to, uh, you know, other, uh, uh, I guess, um, uh, other people who who watch up because I don't watch a lot of uh, TNA. I was about to say Impact, and you know, I'm getting introduced to I believe in Joe. So you know, I I thought that was pretty cool, pretty cool. I'm like okay, so, uh, you know, audience gets introduced to other things. Uh, but anyway, jump on in here, Trey. What you think about Forbidden Doors getting open, man, in wrestling, man? Uh, I think it's cool. I think it's always fun. Like, WWE's been having some big moments this year with that, mainly with TNA. They had, like, you know, Jordan Grace show up in the Royal Rumble and then show up again on NXT and challenge for the title, things like that. Like you said, Joe Hendry's here. They got people going out. I have even heard all of the fans talking that there might be some AJ Styles action in TNA or maybe Drew might go there after quitting. I think it's cool. Uh, The big thing that I think about it is I feel like they should limit it and not make it a thing that happens a lot Mm. because when it, when it's like moments like this are really big and really special because they haven't happened in a long time. So if we get to the point where everyone's coming to WWE all the time and they're going to every other company, you know, a few of them went to do GCW shows at Mania, things like that. Yeah. It's not going to be as big a deal anymore. So yeah. I think yeah. keeping it, keeping it something that doesn't happen all the time makes it cool. And as far as AEW, I agree. I don't think any of us, I know a lot of people do. I don't think I'm waiting for it. If it happens, it'd be cool. If they never do it, I won't be sad because yeah. 70% of them were in WWE anyway. <laughs> oh, man, I can't wait for AEW and WWE's Forbidden Door and John Moxley and Seth Rollins fight, you know? Like, <laughs> like, like we haven't seen that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, I, man, it'll be so cool when Brian Danielson comes and mixes it up with the WWE. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, that's that's a valid point. I mean, it's... it's um. I guess I didn't really think about that. I I was just obviously just trying to uh, propose a question, as in you know, uh, you know, obviously AEW's been been good with partners uh, with a lot of New Japan wrestlers and and uh, uh, CMLL and and other things from other promotions across the world. It, they they they've been open to that. They've even had a partnership with with Impact at the time, and now you see WWE, you know, with the little partnership with TNA and. And, and certain things like that, but I think uh, uh, Trev, you brought up a great point. Uh, it's the uh, the exclusive part of it. Uh, you can't water it down. You give us too much of it, it, it takes the the ore and the specialness off of it, and then it just it's like eh, you might as well just be 
uh, the NCAA uh, of wrestling now, just everybody just kind of just mingling all together. So I, I, great points, fellas. Great points. Great points. Um, not saying that this is anything that's getting talked about. This is just us as wrestling fans having a conversation. If you would like to see a forbidden door open and see what kind of that is a rough segment. So do what? That was a rough segment. That was a rough segment. Yeah. Oh. No well, lie. We we need to workshop some of these questions you'd be asking us. <laughs> just a little bit. I mean, aside from having the samurai uh, uh, take over here while I was watching the samurai movie, and you know, you killed my father. I mean, <laughs> other than that, it was you know, rough, rough. Hey man, I know. Maybe you, maybe you need to workshop your answers. Hey, mm-hmm. hey, he, he he's no, because this guy has been in first place on on my GM two K. Two for for majority of the show, and he just thinks that that cachet just just you know comes along with any other show we do on here on six thirteen. And no, sir, that's not how that works. That's not how that works. You keep it up, and I'm gonna find a way to powers to have the mute button. I'm just gonna mute you every time you just say something ridiculous. <laughs> I'm just gonna just mute. You just gonna be you talking about samurai talk. You gonna be doing this, and we ain't gonna hear nothing. Keep it up. Keep it up, man. Keep it up. Anyway, man, we're gonna we're gonna close this shop on this. Uh I'm looking forward because hey, WWE's been giving us a lot of content lately. Uh obviously NXT Battleground, uh Clash at the Castle, uh Money in the Bank is right around the corner. Real quick before we get out of here. Who would you want to see win money in the bank, men and women? Just just throw a name out there real quick, Quavo. Uh Jay Uso. And women, damn, bro. Uh, I don't know, EO Sky. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Trev. Uh, if he's still alive, I want to see Chad Gable get the money in the bank. And uh, I think for the women, it's Tiffy time. Oh, okay. I haven't or seen will that. be. Yeah, um, besides uh, her uh, joining the announce booth the other night, I haven't seen a lot of Tiffy time lately. Uh, but, hey, good choice, good choice. King Mel, talk to us, man. Give us a man and women who you, who you would like to see win. For the woman, Money in the bank. I want to say, for the woman, I want to say Naomi. Mm. And for the men, I still have not decided yet. Hmm. Still, a little, still, you you not you not ready to uh, full uh, yeet it up yet? Nah, man. Okay. Every time he get close to song, he lose. So I'm done believing in the yeet. Oh, oh, he yeet his ass on out of there. Oh, oh. Okay. Hmm. Well, you can tell he's a Jimmy fan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah no. Man. No he. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm tired of him, man. Y'all, y'all not tired of it? Y'all, y'all not tired? Every time he get right there, he lose. But like, y'all ain't tired of doing this? And then you only doing this when he go get somebody whack? And when he go get somebody above him, he get smacked around? Well, I mean, I, I, still, I still like the joke. I, I still like the bounce. Yeah. Man. Uh-huh. That's how his win loss percentage be. Up and down, up and down. <laughs> God damn, I'm tired of that shit, man. Hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, man, you gotta have patience, man. It took Cody, it took uh Cody his time, man. It, it took Cody his time too, man. Yeah, it did take Cody his time, but the only person he was really losing to like that was Roman. <laughs> He lost to Roman and Brock. I can't really name nobody else he lost to when he came back. Hey, man. Uh, hey. Did he lose to Seth? One. Oh, no, no. He beat, he kept beating Seth. All three times? Yeah, he beat yeah. him three times in a row. Yeah, man. Oh, you, know no. what, you know what Jay Poor do? Pectoral. You know what Jay do? Championship match. Lost. <laughs> King of the Rain tournament lost. <laughs> hey, stop, dog. <laughs> but you know what he did do? Be his hey, brother at WrestleMania, and everybody was like, uh. Okay, but but okay, but but Mel, same logic got applies to Cody. 
Jay was Jay was losing to Gunther, and he's losing to Roman. Who else? Who else has Jay been losing to in big matches? It's been Drew. Jay. I mean, Drew's still a, a big time player though. Priest. Priest. He's he was the he's champion. the champion. Like he's still losing a lot. Mel's Mel's starting to win me over, you guys. <laughs> Yeah, but he's, he's he got some points. He, he ain't lose as much as Chad Gable, and you want him to win the money in the bank. Get out of here. Come on, man. <laughs> man lost five times. Five yeah. times you got an IC title. Yes, yeah, so I, w- I want him to go find any other belt to worry about. <laughs> Leave this one alone. Leave the IC alone. Go after something else, bro. Go after yeah. one. <laughs> I don't you know, know what Chad Gable said. What? He said, yo, he said Triple H that real message. Like, yo, in my next match, I need to win. Like in my team. <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta make sure I win. <laughs> Yo, I ain't messing with y'all, man. Hey man, we come to that point in the show, man. It's time to drop them socials. Quavo, get them socials for the people can find you at, man. Um, yeah, uh Jose Quavo eight on all platforms. Yeah. I dig it, I dig it. King Mel. Drop them socials so the people can find you, man. Kingmail13 on IG. On X. Stay tuned to my GM. We got a little surprise coming for you. And on Facebook, Jamal Scroggins. Hey, Mel ain't lying, man. It's, it's, it's getting real interesting on the my GM uh, 2K24. The booking on that is uh, some mistakes are made. Um, and then uh, some victories I had. Just tune in every Monday, all right? 613 Fate Productions. You're a whole asshole, bro. <laughs> You're a whole asshole, bro. <laughs> Trav, man, drop the socials where the people can find you at, big dog. <laughs> hey, I... Hold on, you got to wait anywhere? It's the loading. Please stand by. Hold on. Uh, okay. There you go. You want to fight? <laughs> I don't want to fight. Your connection is too slow. You won't make it to the match. <laughs> you know how you used to be in Call of Duty? You'd be like, who the hell has this crappy internet, yo? Like, we just try to play already. Damn. Who <laughs> Oh, my gosh. I hate when I can't win the argument because he's right. <laughs> I just gotta, I just gotta take that one. No, Trev, don't, don't let him have that moment. We about sick of damn Quavo, man. <laughs> nah, damn him. Hey, man, go ahead. Drop that's me. that's why I feel bad. <laughs> hey, uh, I make music. You can go find me at Four Clarity, Four Clarity Music, or Four Clarity Official, pretty much anywhere. Or if you want to hang out and talk trash, talk wrestling, come find us in the BWO on Facebook. Yeah, you heard what he said. And of course, you can always catch me on Twitter. KC Wildcard Mar, IW Sports Network, and of course, right here on 613 Faith Productions YouTube channel, where we be having the content for all of y'all to enjoy three days in a row. And it might even be four once Maryland Tech starts popping off. So on uh, Saturdays, of course, tap in with us in the Four Corners of Wrestling. We're going to be throwing them foes up, throwing them paws down. You got D Man K Sports Podcast. On Saturdays, dropping as well. On Sundays, you got one, two, three, four, five. The five top moments in wrestling for the week from our homie King Mel right there. And then, of course, you hear the, the smack talk we be talking. On Monday, my GM, WWE 2K24, the Four Corner Boys, you be in there trying to book shows, you know, combining wrestling and video games together. And that's hosted by the one and only Hollywood Mike T., so like I said, man, three straight days of fire content provided for all of y'all to enjoy right here on the YouTube channel, 613 Freight Productions. Hey, and with all that being said, man, lead this is to the professionals. Do not try this at home. Hey, man, 4C boys, throwing foes up, throwing cars down. We out of here. We see y'all next week. Peace.